G'day guys, applications of differentiation question for you today where it's asking us to locate the position and nature of the turning points of the following functions. We've got a cubic and some kind of rational function over their natural domains. Now, the best way to do this is by using der derivatives. Now, the reason we're going to do that is if we're locating a turning point, let's try and figure out what sort of um, thing we're going to be looking for. So if I just draw some kind of, I like to call them squiggly line functions. So I've got a set of axes here and I've got my function here. Well, I've just drawn a cubic function, but you get the gist. So here's our squiggly line function. Now the turning points of this particular function that I've just drawn are around about here and there. Now, the uh, what's the telling factor about each of these turning points, or what ident we can use to identify these turning points, is if we were to draw a tangent line or find the derivative or the gradient at these particular points, we would find that the tangent line at each of these points, the gradient would be equal to zero. So that's what we're going to use to uh, find our turning points or identify where our turning points are. So let's go about doing that. So to work out our gradient of each of our functions, we're going to have to find the derivative. So basically for using this example, we need to find where the derivative of the function with respect to x is equal to zero. So let's start by doing part A or question A. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of this function. So dy dx. Now I'm not going to go about explaining how I calculate derivatives. There are heaps of videos on the internet about that so you can just look at any one of them. So to work out the derivative of this we're just going to, it's going to be 6x squared minus 18x plus 12. Now we've got to figure out when this is equal to 0. So from here, if we're not given a calculator with solving ability, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. So first of all, we're going to factorise this whole thing by 6, by the looks of it. And then I'm going to factorise this monic quadratic function that I've got inside the brackets. Now, what's that going to be? We've got, yep, minus 2, minus 1, equals 0. And then what we're going to do is we, we know using the null factor law that x is going to have to equal 2 or x is going to have to equal 1. Now what we then do is because we have to locate the position of these turning points, we need to not only know their x value, but we need to know their y value. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these two points back into the original equation here to find out what their corresponding y values are. So let's go about doing that. So we've got the function y evaluated at 2. So we've got 2 times 2 cubed minus 9 times 2. 9 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2. And that is equal to 4, I think. So what's we've got? We've got 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. Minus 36 is negative 20 plus 4. Yep, so we've got 4. And then we're going to evaluate the function at 1. So we have 2 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1. 1. So 2 minus 9 is negative 7 plus 12 is 5. So our two points for this function are going to be 2 comma 4 and we have 1 comma 5. 
Now, we have to work out also what the nature of the turning points are. So what we have to be able to uh, decipher is whether it's a local maximum or a local minimum. So the way we're going to do this, well, the way I like to do it is using the second derivative test. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to evaluate the second derivative of this function. So we're going to be able to describe the concavity of the function using the second derivative. So the second derivative of this function, d squared y over dx squared is going to be equal to 12x minus 18. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the second derivative at x equals 2. So we're going to go d squared y over dx squared evaluated when x is equal to 2. So we sub that into here. 12 times 2 is 24, minus 18 is 6. So that's going to be greater than 0. So if we have a second derivative that is greater than 0, what we can imply from that is the function is concave up. And if function is concave up, it means that we can say, therefore, 2 comma 4 is a local minimum. Cool. So what we're also going to do is we're going to evaluate the second derivative. So we're going to go d squared y over dx squared evaluated when x is equal to 1. So we have 12 times 1 is 12, minus 18 is negative 6, so that's going to be less than 0. So the function at that point is concave down. So a function that is concave down, like this part of our uh, squiggly line graph, will if the function has a derivative of 0 and a second derivative of a negative number, the point in question is a local maximum. So we can say, therefore, 1, 5 is a local maximum. Cool. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to clear this and we're going to come to the second part of this problem. Okay, so on to part B. So hopefully now you guys are well aware of what we're going to be looking for to find the turning points. We're looking for so turning points. We're looking for when the derivative is equal to zero. Great, so that's... From part A of the question, hopefully you guys are well aware of why that is. So let's uh, compute the derivative of this function. So computing the derivative of this is going to be a little bit trickier than the straight cubic function that we just did before. So we're going to have dy dx is equal to... Now we're going to use the quotient rule to solve this derivative. So <clears throat> we've got the derivative of the top. times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1 times the top, all over the bottom squared. Great. So we know from um, this, that this has to, oh, we know from this, we know from part A that this has to be equal to zero. Now, hopefully you guys are aware that with rational functions like this, for this to be equal to zero, the numerator has to be equal to zero. If the denominator is equal to zero, then the function, the, well, the derivative doesn't make sense. So 
let's have a go at finding this. So we just need to find when the numerator is equal to zero. So we have two x plus one, x minus one, minus x plus one, all squared has to equal zero. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna factorize this by x plus one. And that's gonna be factorized by two times x minus one, minus Cool, so now I can just um, work on the inside square bracket. So two times x is two x. Two times negative one is minus two. Then it's minus x minus one equals zero. Cool, so let's collect our like terms inside the bracket. So 2x minus x is just x. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, and that's equal to 0. So the x coordinates of our turning points are going to be x equals negative 1, x equals 3. Great, so what we have to do, like we did in the first part of the question, is we have to evaluate what the function is equal to at these two points. So the function at negative 1 is going to be negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, squared is still 0, over negative 2. So at x equals negative 1, we're going to have the function is going to be equal to negative 1, comma, 0. And we put in 3, so 3 plus 1 is 4, all squared is 16, over 3 take 1 is 2, 16 over 2 is 8. So those are the coordinates of our two turning points. So, like we did before, we have to do, to work out what the nature of these two turning points are, we have to do the second derivative test. So let's write our derivative down. But in this time, I'm going to use the simplified version of the numerator. If we multiply out the top, we can go, this is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 all divided by x minus 1 all squared. Okay, so now we can take the second derivative of this function. So we're going to have d squared y over dx squared, which is equal to the derivative of the top is 2x minus 2 times the bottom. minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. Cool, all divided by the bottom squared. So it's just gonna be x minus one the power of 4. Great, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this quite large equation to figure out what the nature of these two turning points are. So first of all, we're going to evaluate the second derivative when x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so Let's put negative 1 in. We've got negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, minus 2 is negative 4, times negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, squared is 4, so negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And if we put a negative 1 in here, it's this will this here will make a 0, so it'll be negative 16 minus 0, which is still negative 16, all divided by negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, all to the power of 4 is going to be a positive number. So it's negative 16 over a positive number, so the derivative, the second derivative is going to be 
less than zero. So we can say that negative one comma zero. If this is less than zero, it's going to be concave down. And we can say this is a local max. Now, just so we can uh, tell the difference, I'll just change the color. So we're going to work out the second, we're going to do the second derivative test evaluated when x is equal to 3. So we're going to have 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4, 3 minus 2 3 minus 1, sorry, is 2. All squared is 4. 4, 4 is a 16. If we put a 3 in here, it's going to be 0 again. So that'll make that whole thing 0. So it'll be 16 takes 0 over a positive number. So this is greater than 0. Sorry, let me just make that a bit easier to see. This is going to be greater than 0. So we can say that, therefore, 3, comma, 8 is a local minimum. Now, you might think, well, that doesn't make sense to me because this number here is bigger than this number here. Well, that's because if we look at this function here, if we were to draw it, I don't know exactly what it would look like, but you'd probably find that it'd have features that look like this. So you'd have this negative 1 comma 0 would so you'd have a function that looks like this. So it goes up to there and then comes back down and then asymptotes to that and then you'd have this 3, 8 bit so and then it'd go up like this. So you'd have a local minimum here and a local maximum there. So you can see how you could have a one with a y value being less than one with an x value and this still being a max and this still being a minimum. So that's cool, we've figured out the entire thing. So basically what we need to do when we're finding turning points, we have to find where the first derivative is zero. So what we usually do, we'll differentiate these functions, whatever function we get, and we'll set them equal to zero and solve for x. Because we need to find the position of the functions, we then need to sub in those two x values that we find back into the original equation to find what their corresponding y values are. Once we've done that, we use the second derivative test or the test of concavity at those points to find if it is either concave up or concave down. If it is concave up, that's when the ha we have a um, second derivative greater than zero. And if it's concave up, we will find that that point is a local minimum. If it's concave down, i.e. looks like this, we'll find that the point is a local maximum. And once we've done that, you've found the position and you've found the nature. So this one here is the actual coordinate. This here is if it's a maximum or minimum. And the turning points just means that where the derivative is zero. So once you've got all that information found out, you've finished the question and you can move on. So it's quite an in-depth question. You know, you're going to need to do a few of these problems, I would say, before you can feel completely comfortable. Or, well, I had to do a few of these problems before I felt completely comfortable with them. But, you know, stick with it. They're always going to be the same sort of um, style in terms of find the derivative, find where it equals zero, figure out the y value, do the test of concavity, and then write down your answer. They're always going to follow those steps. So if you just get a handle on those steps, you should be fine for any question where it's asking you to find these turning points. All right, guys, well, I hope the video helped. If it did, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like. I put out new videos all the time, and I hope to see you again next time.